All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow, and I'm going to go ahead and take over here and uh, get you started. I uh, hope everybody's having a great trading session. So we've, we've seen equities come under some pressure following the ADP number. Uh, dollar's weaker, but it's not one shoe size fits all feet. It, it just isn't. Um, uh, you, you can see the, the weakness, obviously, in the, the US dollar, Japanese yen as we continue to break down, um, you know, really holding below the levels that we talked about yesterday in the dollar yen, we had to hold below the 109.35. Um, we, we really just kind of stayed weak. And, um, you know, coming into the number, we were trading around the 109, just below 109 level. And uh, we've obviously slumped since then. But, you know, the, the data is really affecting more of the, um, the, the euro, uh, we are seeing the euro um, get up towards that 119 level. Obviously, we have the Kiwi that's staying near its highs, which is impressive considering that we're seeing equities come under pressure. And, uh, you know, the equity markets are, you know, in the middle of the range. But, you know, for today, they, they are a little bit weaker. So um, we are rolling over just a little bit in equities. I don't expect them to go very far. But, Maybe that's why the dollar is, you know, getting some, uh, uh, seeing some selling here because, you know, people know, or at least they sense that the dollar doesn't have too far to go uh, in, in a situation like this. Um, you guys bear with me. I'm going to, I got to close my office door for just one second. I, today is, uh, um, so you guys know, I know it's pretty early. Today's my, uh, my kid's first day of school. So people are kind of getting up and around here uh, today um, a little earlier than normal. Uh, usually I just kind of keep my door open um, because everybody's sleeping, but summer breaks over. So excuse me one second. All right. Sorry about that. Like I said, I you know today is a, a, a little change in um, in protocol around the home office, if you will. Um, by the way, I haven't even asked you guys. How's everybody doing today? You guys doing all right? It's kind of a you know it's a, even though we're seeing a little bit of movement in the markets, uh, the the one thing that I have to mention is it is summer and summers typically especially in august things really start to slow down for the webinars too we you know the the markets become more range bound uh, everybody's on break and yada 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 so anyway nice to have you guys here all right let's um let's go through the chart so uh s p is pretty easy uh, as you guys know uh, i'll just write 4375 once again uh, 4375 obviously that's critical support and um you know we're in a bullish trend and uh resistance 4430 and then obviously 4440 beyond that and just in case things start to squeeze you just realize the 161 percent extension comes in uh close to 4500 i i don't think we're going there uh today but you never know 4430 4440 okay all right, uh, let's go into the euro. So here we are, the euro. You, you know, uh, Dale was talking about possible bull flag pattern. You know, we were talking about it on the um, the, the face webinar. Um, yes, and what I'd pay, pay most attention to is just this resistance up here. We wrote one nineteen ten. Remember, this is the six one eight retracement of this move. We really have to clear that to to open the door for higher. Um, with today's ADP data, is it possible? It is. I mean, it is. 119.10. Uh, I'm going to say we are in a range. Um, support. Uh, we had written down 118.30 yesterday, but today's low, 118.41. Is that today's low? Yeah, 118.41. Maybe that's it. You know, I, I was being a little too aggressive yesterday. Um, that previous high, that low. So that comes in, at, let's just call it 118.40. Now, let's imagine we break out. If we break out, you, you have to 
look at this low here, right? Spike low, high. So if we break out, next resistance is going to be 119. Which, I mean, I'm going to write down 119.75. I just, I don't think we'll make it that high. Um, not not on a day like today, but I'm, I'll write it down just just because, okay? I don't think we're getting up there, but I just need to throw that out there. Sterling. Patty said he's struggling to connect to the webinar. Huh. All right. Uh, okay. So let's, um, I'm not sure what the hell's going on. Okay. Anyway. Sterling. Resistance. 140. Support. One third, what we wrote yesterday. So I'm just going to continue to write that down because if this, I, I know I wrote this yesterday at the, the, the close, this could be a flag, you know, that's developing. I, I think I wrote that on the daily end of day analysis. Let me uh, go double check. Pretty sure. At least I was thinking it. End of day, the 50 day blah, 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 could be developing a bull flag pattern on the daily chart. Basically like that. So, you know, it, I, I was thinking this, uh, which means that we could probably be up against resistance here. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to still write down and I'm going to get rid of this for now. We'll see how we develop today. We'll see what holds as far as resistance goes. But um, I am going to put down resistance at 140, support at 138.30, and you guys can have fun with it. How about that? Because Sterling's not my gig today. It's not uh, not my gig. Um, Ozzy. So here we are up at resistance. Let's let's make the assumption. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to make this assumption is because we the S and P is still in a range and could probably hold its range. So let's just make an assumption that the Aussie is going to squeeze higher. Um, if, if we squeeze above this 74 and a quarter, which I, I think we wrote 74.20 as resistance yesterday. I'm going to assume it holds, but so I'm going to go into bearish for today, but let's, let's say it breaks. Where are we going to go? Well, previous support, that should act as current resistance. That's 75.30. That's squeezable. Um, hold on really quick. Let me just try one thing really fast. I'm going to delete this as soon as I'm done. Okay. High to low. Let me put it in a different form. See, that comes in at 72 or 75.20. Two. Uh, see, I, I actually think that that's the target on a break higher. So I'm going to delete it. It's 75.20. I'm going to write it down just in case, you know. Crude super weak. Stocks are, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I mean... I'm not saying that we're going up here, but I think it is possible. It is. Support today is at 73.50. Anybody who's short right now is going to be happy on a move back to 73.50 just to pull some off. I don't have any short Aussies right now. It, this is the best risk reward to be on the short side of the Aussie right now. If, you, if you're if you a bear, um, like intraday, you, you know, you got to be thinking, all right, well, this flag's going to hold. I'm just going to be short here and put my stops above. 41. I, I'm not taking it short. I'm just saying that would be, if I was a bear, that's how I would think about it. Okay. 
Aussie. But on the flip side is the or uh, Kiwi, excuse me, the Kiwi continues to squeeze. 200 day moving average, previous support, that's all really key resistance. I am going to write down 7110 today. If we break above 7110, we go from, um, we go from, well, I don't know if I want to put it in bullish, but it, we're probably going to end up squeezing up here. Uh, let me get rid of this really quick. We need this one. So if we squeeze past here, we should, we should, race towards 7150 this this i would think is doable all that i don't again i don't know if i'm gonna flip it to bullish but i'm definitely happy we haven't been a kiwi bear at this point and it's been obvious i mean we, we've all talked about it we've talked about it here how obvious it, it's been because of the false breakdown it's just been acting a lot better than the kiwi and look at the aussie new zealand it's super bearish i mean it rejected, how many times did we reject 106? One, two, three, four, five, six, six days. You know, we've been talking about that for, for a while. I'm just, I'm more irritated that I never got a short Aussie New Zealand off. As much as I talked about it being short at 106, I didn't get, I didn't squeeze one off, which now we're at the 161% extension. I don't know if I really want to be long kiwi dollars right now knowing that the aussie kiwi just hit a pretty key uh support so anyway so do i think this is going to hold i do although you know what i just i'm going to put this as a uh, asterisk okay doesn't mean i want to short the kiwi right now i just think it's going to hold um support on dips in the in the kiwi will be right here and and let's not forget that was a strong jobs number yesterday. So it's just keeping the um, you know RBA on the uh, the 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 path of um, you know tapering. Brand says so with the sterling, let the market come to you. Yeah, I you know that's the way I I have to approach. I I do not chase sterling anywhere i don't it is really a um it, it just I, I don't chase it because it, it every time i chase it i get killed personally so i just don't do it no just answer just Um, Brand said, "Yeah, I learned that the hard way." Yeah. Um, I uh, go look at my um, Twitter uh, pin tweet. <laughs> I did the. Uh, I've been. I have been planning. By the way, I, I have this. I, I'm going to refilm that video at some point. I'm the one where I throw the. Uh, my an old laptop this is like five or six years ago i did i did I, you should see the discus form i have on that video if you guys haven't seen it it's a it's great form admittedly anyway let's continue on canadian sue and by the way the market's going to open here in one minute so the dollar canadian is holding up really well. Why? Well, crude's weak. So uh, crude is about ready to approach some hit some pretty key support down. Oh no, we got um, we got a couple of bucks until we get to key support. But anyway, one of the reasons why the dollar Canadian holds up. Now, yesterday we wrote the thirty eight percent retracement is holding. Boom, it held. That was before we got there, by the way. Um, so that tells us how important this one, I think, 125, 12570. Is 
that held. And if you go back exactly 24 hours, 1500 hour, we are right here and it broke higher. Yesterday, 24 hours ago, we were right here. It hit the 70 in reverse. So that becomes now key. And I'm gonna write down 125.75 because we did overshoot it by five pips. So sorry, I was off by five pips yesterday. My fault, I'll try not to do that again. Um, support today. Now I would be, if I was trading the loony, I'd be focused on that trend line right there. So that means that low at 125.13. I'm not gonna write that down, but for those of you that, well, I mean, I can, I guess I will. I, I, I'm more concerned about this hourly low here, which comes in at 124.90. So I'm gonna do 124, what did I say? 124.90, 124.90, 125.30. Fifteen? Is that what it was? Uh, Twenty. No, this low right here, thirteen. So yeah, yeah, fifteen. Fifteen is fine. Okay, we're gonna keep that in a range. Dollar Swiss. Now, did you guys notice the uh, the Swissy is actually holding support here? At least it was last time I looked. Well, oh, <laughs> it was until uh, after the jobs data, <laughs> the ADP data drove it lower. Okay, so 90 is the 78% retracement. Man, and we really have to get above 90. I think we wrote that down yesterday too. 9075 maybe, 9075. Um, I'm gonna keep it in range. I know some of you are like, Blake, that's bearish. I know it's broken down over the last, you know, week or whatever, but I, I still think we're more range bound than anything. You know, how, how nice is it if you go, oh, it's bearish and then you get aggressively bearish at the bottom end of the range and then it comes right up in your face and you're like, well, I can't believe I got super bearish right there. Oh, well, yeah. Norway, same as it ever was. Oh, Stelius is about ready to start naming 80 songs. Oh, I don't know if he's here today. Steve's here. I don't know if Stelios is here. Um, 70 cents. I'm just going to write. You guys here. What do you need? You need some more 80s hits? Same as it ever was. Yeah, totally I, hits. I heard, I heard you mention me. I am here, and Greg is going to be with us as well in uh, any minute now, actually. When you're finished, yeah. See, if we, if we say Steve um, 80s hits, Steve is going to say... Duke Nukem. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that was good, wasn't it? That's that was good. good. Yeah. I Duke just pulled Nukem. that one out of my butt. That was good. Duke, Duke Nukem 3D was one of my favorite, favorite FP, FPSs in uh, the 90s. Very funny game. Duke Nukem was like, I remember the very first iteration of that. And my, um, oh my yeah. that, one of my friends since I was four years old, um, who actually yes. he, owned, he owned a comic book store. Uh, years later uh his dad had uh, duke nukem in the very first iteration of it back yeah in like there was duke nukem one and two but uh, oppositely from the rest of the series that were first person shooters they were platform games you know the ones you see from the side and they're like you know you can go just it, two two dimensional uh, games you know yeah, I, I, the, I had them as well the it was on an like an uh first like apple computer thing i i just remember it just being this old old well i mean at the time it wasn't old but anyway no they were all fun games actually uh, for the era each one of them dollar max nothing's changed here uh, i'm gonna write down 1970 is and then i'm gonna write down 19 i think i wrote down 1995 yesterday maybe i wrote down two i i did it's hard i can't remember yesterday uh, dollar max. Oh, I wrote, wrote down 20. I'm sorry. So, um, this, well, I guess even just to get up here, I think that's why I wrote that down yesterday. I'm going to go just back to 20. I don't think we're going there today. I, well, if we go, if we go anywhere, it'll be to 20, but 
I don't think we're going to get past that today. Let's just put it that way. Uh, again, in order for things to really, in order for like, uh, by the way, the Kiwis at new highs, Aussies at new highs. Um, Aussies trying to break out here. I just looked up and just saw all the markets moving. So just, we were seeing a little bit of movement right at the open. Um, but the, the thing I wanted to say about uh, the, um, about uh, stocks is I just don't feel that stocks are going anywhere. I don't feel that we're going to be, you know, breaking lower today. If we, if I felt that the stock market was going to break the, uh, the, the, the 4375, um uh i i would be thinking that we might crack this 20 level but i just don't see that happening today so anyway dollar yen uh we're almost to that target from yesterday which will be i'm going to write down 108.65 then 108 2020 that the channel's ascending so 108.20 and 108.65. I, I don't know if we had 108.20 yesterday because there's 108.35. Why don't I write down 35? Let me, let me double check that. Oops. Oh, because the 78% retracement. Got it. That's why. But because of the weak data, I'm going to allow for an overshoot towards channel support. So if you guys are aching to be long the dollar yen for whatever reason, why don't you try it down there? Like, it, I'm not saying we're going to get there. I'm just going to, I'm going to say, how about this is your best risk reward? While we're below 109, it seems like we're going down that direction. So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to just start buying here. Why don't you just try to be a little patient and wait for that channel support to come in? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, dollar index. Wait, did I finish that up? I didn't. Um, 109.35. That, that has to be broken to take this downside pressure off. By the way, um, Steve Stelios, I, I don't know if we're having issues with the webinar today. No, why would we? Um, no, th there's, no, good. there's less people listening in today than, than normal right at the start. So I don't know if it was a problem. Patty said he couldn't get in. Um, I don't know if there was an issue. I'm just bringing it up in case anybody. Uh, yeah, knew, okay. Um, I mean, you know, nothing is impossible, but I didn't experience any issues logging in either of them and i received the emails and everything else and oh, okay right. yeah same, same here okay all right just thought perhaps something up. local i mean some local server of zoom perhaps affecting yeah. uh, just it, you know it seems segment. like most people have caught on or by now it's just earlier maybe that was the that that was it um okay just want to bring that up so mm -hmm. it, with the uh, dollar index pennant bearish potential um let's mark down support at trend low but i think more importantly let's actually just in case this pennant starts to play out let's just look at key support of being 91.50 i think that's really what we should pay attention to 91.50 i'm not putting bearish oh am i missing something here oh this is still bullish while we're above 870 that's what i was missing um Still range bound. Uh, I do think that while we're below 9235 or 9235, 92, 9230. Uh, I wrote one of the two levels up, it doesn't really matter. 9230. I just don't think we're getting there. I think it's near term bearish intraday, but overall, we're just kind of range bound. Um, when our S and P, uh, where is gold, silver, uh, and Bitcoin? So, silver almost to resistance. Oh, look at that channel resistance. We're probing it, and notice this little. See that wick? That's a problem, right? 
So high is 2598. So I am going to write down 26. Support. Well, uh, I'll just write down 2519, 2520. Although, you know, you know, we're not going to, we're not breaking this today. If we did, I'd be shocked, but um, I'll write that down for right now. 25, 20. Gold. Almost at this resistance. Now, remember, if we break. We should get a little squeeze. So I'll write it down just 18. 1835 just in case that goes to 1875 because this is a 40 this is a 40 point range right here right this is 40 points so in the event we break out that could take us all the way up here that's um something just to think about support for gold is obviously 1790 we don't have to worry about that right now because we're not going to get there and Bitcoin is ripping, but Bitcoin- Which, which is surprising because the SEC, you guys heard, right? They said they want to start looking at regulating cryptos, et cetera. And they dumped a little bit and now they're back up in strength, which is very surprising. Well, it is Steve's favorite asset class. So, you know, uh, we're going to keep that in a range, sure. that in a range, gold in a range, and your bias chart is finished. So, got it. Great. Um, so, guys, I, you know, again, I, I'm going to reiterate. I think we're in a just a big range here for the S and P. I don't think we're going to challenge the. Well, I, we could challenge the upper or lower end of this range in the S and P, but I don't think we're going to go anywhere ahead of the jobs report. So, um, just continue to stay. I think continue to stay the course here. The and the reason why I mentioned that is. Try not to get too bearish or bullish the dollar, um, because if the S and P is in a range, the chances of the dollar being in a range are pretty good. So, you know, if you if you're like, well, I'm just, you know, I, I think the Aussie's really going to squeeze higher above this resistance. We might squeeze a little higher, but you know, this could end up just being the channel top. And so, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like the Aussie squeezes to seventy four thirty five and then just rolls back over again. Um, you know, as we stay in this, like more of a flag pattern. So that, that's why I wanted to, that's why I wanted to mention that about the dollar. Just don't, don't get too aggressively bullish or bearish right now, because I just don't, I don't know if we have that capacity to really start breaking out. Um, especially with, we have, we have ISM numbers today in about 15 minutes. We have, uh, we have more, I think we get both ISM and uh, we get services and manufacturing. Let me double check that. Let me just, just confirm. You know what? We're going to get... Um, ISM in 15 minutes. I know the, the, the ISM um, services data. Where's our, yeah. I guess our manufacturing data is coming in on Monday, probably. So I guess we're not going to get the manufacturing this week. I thought we might get it this week too, but um, but we're not. But we, you know, we have that services data. We have the the, the Bank of England uh, on Thursday. We have, um, you know, uh, then obviously the jobs report on Friday. I think markets probably going to be waiting for that before you before they get too aggressively bearish or bullish the dollar. So just be careful about chasing us chasing the market. In, in either direction, really. Um, all right, guys. Uh, you guys have a great, uh, great um, session here. I'm going to leave it to Steve and Stelios. And, Greg, actually, but yes. And what? To Greg. Oh, you're going to leave Greg in here? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Screw yeah. Greg. You know, he, you know, he wanted to be bullish, you know, gold and, you know, gold went up and whatever. Whatever. Good job, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. I'm you mean silver. Guess.
<laughs> good. Hey, good, good, good pattern in play. Greg, it's always good to hear your voice. Thanks for uh, covering for the, um, for the uh, uh, week ahead video. I'm, I know everybody really enjoyed um, getting that this weekend. So thank you. Yeah. You will do the Elliott wave charts next time. So. I am. Yeah. I'm going to do, I'm going to Elliott wave it up on, on, on this weekend. So <laughs> Swi switching places. <laughs> yeah. You guys, Hey, good luck today. Um, we'll Thanks, see you guys mate. a little later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, mate. Grab it, Gregor. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Mm. And let's see what you've got. Next leg lower in the dollar has begun, right? Yeah, this is what we've been talking about mm -hmm. uh, for the last few weeks. Each time when I was here in the webinar, we said that we are seeing these pullbacks still either as part of just temporary complex corrections here on US dollar index, or maybe this is, as you said yourself, already finished correction and we are going much lower. So uh, overall, I think that commodity currencies, which were quite weak recently compared to maybe That's the pound. That's exactly what Europe, I wanted to say. Uh, yes, are seeing, now finally seeing, picking up. Exactly. Seeing them move, I was saying yesterday, that you know, I have to remain bearish the dollar, but I'm a little bit skeptical because commodity currencies are not showing follow through yet. So yes, I yes. like the price action I see today. Yeah, this is changing now. New Zealand dollar mm -hmm. has seen a really nice bounce after employment data. And I think that even Australia um, is doing quite surprisingly actually with this tapering scenario despite this lockdown so i think that uh, sooner or later even now imagine if in australia lockdowns are going to be removed or if this uh their chart or cases are going to see lower um levels then i think that it would be very support supportive for Aussie. Mm -hmm. now looking at dxy still we are tracking this ongoing decline that is underway since last year of March and uh, this COVID crisis is not done yet. So even this trend maybe is not done yet as well, because as you know, everything has begun last year back in March. So yep. I'm looking at here as a ongoing impulse, you have wave one, wave two, nice extended wave three. And looks like that now we are this trying to complete this wave four. It can be a flat now in a flat, you can see wave B that will move close to the starting point of wave A and then wave C close to ending point of wave A, but mm -hmm. not necessarily above this price level. So uh, I think that this actually this wave C rise can be already finished because if you look at the four hour chart here, you can previously count five waves to the upside, which is needed to complete wave C. And what is most, the most important is that we are seeing now this bearish reversal quite strong here with no overlaps mm -hmm. in the recent price action. So it looks like this is trying to build a bearish impulse here. Still, we have to take out this 91.74 level, but overall it looks really like it's acting like an impulse. And then and selling rallies. Yeah, so I think that there is more weakness uh, coming. Of course, rallies can be even something bigger when we accomplish this five wave drop, the first the first slide, but overall, I think that uh, there can be much more uh, dollar weakness coming, especially against, as we said, commodity currencies. So if we look at, uh, for example, on New Zealand dollar. Speaking uh, of commodity currencies, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, but since you're here, we can talk about it today, is I, I see some of the crosses breaking down, which we had said that eventually is going to happen. Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi, Pound Aussie, Pound Kiwi. Some of yes. them have already started breaking down. And I think this might be starting a very decent move lower. Yeah, this is probably the very strong scenario for overall risk on sentiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, where obviously commodity currencies will do their job. So, yes, I agree with you here. And looks like that since we are here at New Zealand dollar, looks like that this correction is now trying to put in a low here. You still have this free wave drop against the previous very sharp recovery. So obviously I want to stick with this uptrend. Notice that this overall, this structure was not very aggressively bearish. Uh, it was quite slow in these tight ranges, especially if you compared with the previous uh, lags 
since March of last year. So I'm thinking about more upside after this uh, free wave move. And looks like that we have some very important breakout going on today to, to confirm that we are turning here. Notice that price is now accelerating after it, it went through this bullish channel. So you have a bullish price going out of a bullish channel. It really gives you the idea that market is in a very strong move. And probably that's indicating that we are in a way free of an impulse. So mm -hmm. watch out for more upside while we are above this 69.50. Of course, if this level is broken, that was probably um, the low of this week. So if this swing low is broken, then of course, patterns will become a little bit more complex. But mm -hmm. for now, it looks like that we have some clarity that suggests more gains here. Also, if we look at some crosses, let me look at uh, New Zealand against the Japanese yen. Now, this one also had a very nice pullback here. Uh, looks like a consolidation that is pointing higher. What is very nice is that this drop here looks like a wedge formation an ending diagonal that could be completing this abc flat formation more importantly notice that from the lows after we spiked below 75 57 um, we are seeing a five wave rally followed by three wave setback and now again a rise so this is a very strong bullish pattern and even if you ignore the elliott wave levels you can clearly see here this um bullish head gregor shoulder. From a basic technical analysis perspective, I can even expand on uh, the bullish outlook for this uh, because I think we also have a pretty good looking inverted head and shoulders formation. Yeah, with I the head that. But you ah, sorry. Sorry, I was looking <laughs> at my charts and I didn't listen to that. Yeah, so yeah. we have the neckline almost where we are at the moment, right? Yeah, exactly. So head. we are now at this neckline. Let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yes. Here. That's what I have. Yes, so I think that there is a really nice chance for the first shot up towards 78. Mm -hmm. That would be minimum upward objection, but ideally we will see an extension towards 161 for a way free if we consider that rise should be impulsive mm -hmm. if the higher degree correction is finished. So overall, I think it's a very nice um, pattern so far that suggests potential bottom formation here. Uh, even if we look at um, what we have, let's take a look at ASEAN. Now, yeah, ASEAN, it's somewhat similar, a little bit weaker, but yes, a little bit weaker. But still, if we look at the daily chart here, of course, we are not seeing any confirmations that we are headed higher. But at least this drop on the four-hour time frame, it was overlapping. Okay. So this one suggests that sooner or later, even this pair or this currency, mm -hmm. Aussie, which was one of the weakest over the last few weeks, should pick up. And if the weak currency is now going... Yeah, to but looking higher, at the Aussie Kiwi as well, uh, I think why, yes. not, why not be long the um, comparative strength, right? So, I mean, you know, if you want to be long one of them, why not be long the Kiwi yen? Exactly. Or you should at least maybe split. Yeah, yeah. Um, now let's take a look also on dollar Mexican peso. Now, I really favored more weakness on this one for the last few weeks. We even made the blog post, I think, mm -hmm. on this one. And the reason it was, of course, bullish oil prices, very uh, good looking Mexican peso, despite those pullbacks or rally, I should say, on dollar across the board that we have seen recently. Dollar Mexican peso was still uh doing quite well in this range we haven't seen any real rises or break to the upside so i assume that when dollar will hit resistance this one should very easily turn to the downside so overall i still think that this downtrend is intact and that we could see more weakness especially if we consider this a b c d e triangle that is now trying to accomplish here in wave four you are now testing this trend line so if we can break it ideally this week then i guess that we will accelerate lower into wave five now looking at the four hour chart and why i think that this breakout could be coming is because wave e is a corrective flag and you already can count three waves which is a corrective structure here so i think that 
more weakness here can be in the cards of course the breakout point 19.70 with a daily close below that level would really cause probably more weakness especially if we maybe finish below that levels on friday after non-farm payroll support uh, also let's take a look on um on cable now cable is also uh turning up very nicely after this flat formation which completed a pattern with a spike here towards 38.2 percent below wave a uh, now this appears to be a very nice bullish impulse here for wave one so watch out for potentially for consolidation maybe tomorrow with uh, bank of england um press conference maybe we'll see and decisions maybe we'll see some spike to the downside but overall i think that there can be they can be hawkish and their COVID cases as i know they turned lower recently so it can be very positive overall for pound and i would not be surprised to see more more strength here uh but ideally after we retest the lower supports i have even one hour time frame here Looking this to be a wave B, so first very nice support is at 1.3840, followed by this second range here, around 61.8%. But overall, I just think that this is a pullback on the way up. Okay, I think that this is probably one of the most clearest pattern that I can find at the moment here on uh, across the FX charts. Yep. Uh, now what? Let's take a look also on silver. Now, silver is reversing quite nicely and we've been looking for this jump in price and the reason was because I was able to count five waves to the downside here. Now, even if this would be wave three and not, a, not an extended wave, see like a labeled it on this there chart, would still be a corrective you bounce. would still, yes, expect a rally. So... Last week rally and a close here above 20, uh, $25 was very important evidence that market is probably going to see more gains here. And now if you look at the one hour time frame charts, well, I can count down five waves up here. Also, you have gold silver ratio, which is turning to the downside. And overall, that's bullish for metals. I have gold silver ratio here, I think. Mm. Yeah, gold silver ratio had a nice prolonged corrective well, rebound. Yes. Uh, at least that's how it looks like. And it might be, you know, about to. I hear this. Yes. Okay. So here we have this very nice, potentially even five waves down here on gold silver ratio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I zoom this out, you can actually see that we are turning down after we retest this upper side of this channel. So I think that this is now bearish indication. And as I said, if you have five waves up on silver, then really this makes you bullish for metals because even weaker gold is today higher. So if we look at gold, what I'm looking at here is a nice potential ongoing triangle still. We are now uh, at this upper trend line resistance of this potential triangle. So maybe there can be some slowdown coming, but overall, I think that breakout will be to the upside. I'm looking ideally for an overlap with 1857. Now this overlap would invalidate any bearish impulse, impulsive interpretation. Now imagine that this is wave one, you have a wave two, wave three, and this is your wave four. Well, yeah, so above that, there's no chance overlap. this is a way for. Yeah, so I just think that if we break here and make an overlap, it will be much stronger evidence that we are really headed higher. But maybe still not straight to the upside, just higher towards the upper side of this triangle, of this consolidation. And perhaps another observing. pullback for a way V, yeah? Yes, so for now, I'm sticking with a bullish case for uh for a push we just go to ism manufacturing non-manufacturing pmi by the way 64.1 versus 60.5 so stronger <laughs> than um expected just giving you information go on yeah okay um so um for gold as i said it's weaker than silver but 
it also looking bullish. Maybe we'll just get now this retracement here for a wave E. Let's assume that this is wave D and you will get wave E here, but overall still it's a consolidation on the way up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's take a look on what we have else. Let's take a look on stocks. Yeah, let's take a look at stocks and then it's not a bad idea to revisit uh, USD yen and yields perhaps. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, here we have uh, this ongoing wave 5 of 3. It could be a throw over formation here coming because notice that if you zoom this in, we are here trading quite slow. It looks like a consolidation here, right? It's not really a top formation. Yeah, so I looks like more that we'll consolidation. A strong push to the upside. It can be thrown over into a wave five. Also, when I'm looking at one hour time frame chart here, and if you're familiar with the Elliott wave setups, then you can clearly recognize this bullish pattern. You have five waves up, you have only three waves down. Again, wave C moved below wave A. It found the support at the former wave for super, uh, swing levels and it rallied. So I think this is extremely bullish scenario here, at least in yeah. the short term. And I think 500 that, coming. Yeah, so I think that more upside here could be coming and this could be very, very soon. You will even be able to spot minor free waves on this smaller time frame than one hour chart. So I think that here, despite tracking this wedge, um, very careful here. I still think that this, at least based on the short term charts, is uh, that uh, recovery is incomplete. Also, uh, we have to look at the DAX as well. Also consolidating here, looking for more upside. Maybe that was some kind of a triangle here for a wave four. So watch out for a push to a new high. Uh, and then let's see what happens up there at the same time when the S&P will also be at the new high. So maybe that should be some kind of a uh, do die zone for, for for those two markets. If maybe bulls will be able to stay bullish or maybe this will be the final uh, piece of the puzzle to complete the higher degree structures. Uh, you mentioned dollar yen, right? Yes, and yields. Yeah, so dollar yen overall still looks like it's headed lower for a correction. We've been anticipating a pullback here. Um, so for now, this looks like very nice reversal. And um, this support may not be so far away. However, wave C compared to wave A comes around 108. You have even much better support at 107.45. So I think that there is room for more weakness here. And then um, assuming the same applies to yields then? Yeah, so yields, I mean, this is quite tricky still. Uh, however, I'm looking at, wait a minute, you don't see a chart, right? No, now we do. Yeah. I was looking recently at these two trend lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have this trend line resistance connected from uh, September of last year, and then you have this upper trend line of this potential corrective or maybe even base channel. So yes, looks like that we are trying to break higher here. So yields appears to be headed lower, obviously. And yeah. this this means that the dollar, uh, that the overall dollar weakness could resume. Yeah, um, you know, I doesn't sound like a good excuse, but fundamentally speaking, um, I'm I'm very skeptical about this move. Uh, with inflation being where it is and yields being where they are, I think there is a much much limit, much more limited potential for lower yields than there is for higher yields. So yeah, for the time being. Uh, technically speaking, I, I have no arguments against what you just said. But if I'm looking more than a short term horizon, you know, I find it extremely difficult to be bearish yields where we currently are and with everything that's happening. Yeah. So maybe it will be important for 
uh, currency traders to observe the difference between bonds and the US yields to spot maybe the next lack on the euro dollar. It would be much easier maybe to observe the, the directional moves based on differential. Mm -hmm. um, because if we look at bond here, mm. yeah, bonds are much stronger. Yeah, I mean, much stronger. Yes, and overall, ob obviously, all this sector should somehow move into similar directions. And I've been also looking at five and two year US yields, and they've been all showing us somehow similar picture. So yeah, you know, the, the, the latest assumption you just made, I know it's extremely hard and calling these things is, you know, a very, very long shot. I, I will be the first one to admit it. But I have to tell you is that my general thesis has been and remains that at some point there's going to be a huge disconnect between what the boons are doing and what the, uh, the um, uh, US treasuries are doing. And the reason is extremely simple because yeah, sure. only one of them deserves to be safe haven. There is yeah. nothing safe with the US, with the uh, economic and financial status of the US itself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So at some point, I think there's going to be some kind of a realization and crisis, which is going to enhance the safe haven status of bonds much more because the uh, safe haven status of the uh, U.S. treasuries will have to be uh, put in question. Um, so at some point, and as I said, the, these type of prognostications are not you know, easy to make and uh, they're even harder to time. But at some point, I think we're going to see a huge divergence between the two of them, with the clear winner being the German bonds in comparison to the U.S. treasuries. Yeah, so we'll see how this will overall unfold. But as you said yourself, I mean, for now, at least technicals are where they are. And so far, I have to respect that. So yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. we will see, of course, what the end of the year will bring when those banks will probably step towards a tapering much more aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so for the end, let's take a look also on maybe on Bitcoin. Yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, corrective rebound. Yeah, I mean, you will not be able to draw much, much more clearer pattern than this. Okay, so you have this very nice five waves down and a free wave rally back into the area of a former wave four. Mm -hmm. So that's your first resistance up there that was recently tested at 38.2%. We are seeing a very nice sell off. So I think that follow through could be coming here over the next few sessions. If suddenly we rally, the next resistance is here at around 47,000. But uh, generally speaking, I really doubt that this is any kind of a start of a new bull trend. I rather think it's a trap, um, but Very likely. as you know, more buyers will buy, less chances is that this thing is going to go straight to the upside. Okay, nice. We have a couple of questions, um, Gregor. One of them has to do with, let's stay in effects for the time being. One of them is uh, Euro Yen. Um, I'm assuming you also see a corrective pattern unfolding here. Uh, that's what I see so far. It's orderly and channeled. Yeah. I mean, as we've been talking about recently that, yes, all of those yen crosses could see maybe some kind of a rally, but euro, if commodity currencies are picking up, the euro is maybe is not the best choice. Um, but still, it look it's looking very corrective here from the highs you will have a lot of issues counting this in five waves. So if it's, if it's not a five wave move, then it's a corrective. So I think that there is a chance for this market to rally. Uh, if we look at the four hour chart here, mm -hmm. maybe some kind of a flat here. Um, let's say a daily close above 130 could really push uh, prices much higher later on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I, I see all these yen crosses pullbacks yeah as mean, corrective and they're uh, identical so yeah they, they they look identical some of them a little bit stronger some of them a little bit weaker but they do look identical 
indeed. So uh, Eurogen is not uh, an exception. And uh, one last one that we have, and then we wrap it up, has to do with mRNA, which is Moderna, mm. which, in my opinion, is super bullish. It has literally gone vertical. Uh, no, I'm assuming the question here is how, how long can it extend? Uh, I was looking at this pattern since we were trading just above 200 and we had a breakout. And now we've really gone vertical. I, I wouldn't this be chasing one. it up here. Yeah. I wouldn't be chasing it up here, but it still looks, you know, super strong. This looks like some Wave very, three. very, I mean, such a par parabolic moves yeah. are very dangerous. And parabolic moves will often end with an extended lag. Mm -hmm. So if I label this based on Elliott wave terms, then it should be like that. So maybe mm -hmm. in the near future, still some upside after pullback, but um, by the yeah, definitely. end of the year, we chasing be much, up here, much yeah, definitely chasing up here is, <laughs> you know, is getting mad, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So I think that there is. But on the other hand, fading this, you, you, know, all, you know, also looks very, very dangerous. <laughs> you have much better setups somewhere as well. Look at Zoom, for example. Yeah, I agree with you. We had a look at Zoom at the other, at the other day. It, it seems like it has just broken out, perhaps in a wave two now. Yeah, it could be actually stepping into wave three. You have yeah. a very nice free wave setback, previously very nice impulse. So that's a healthy correction, and that's something you want to look for. And you have a breakout, so that invalidation level is clearly defined. Although to make if a looking for longs here. Although to make a crazy, uh, a crazy fundamental um, connection between the two stocks, I would have to say that you know. In order for Zoom to strongly rally out of this, it's we would down. need to we would need to go back to an environment of like lockdowns, etc. Yeah. In which, which case, very in which in which case, uh, Moderna would have no reason to underperform since they're making vaccines, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you never know. I mean, they might. They might, for example, have issues with the vaccine or whatever, and that be the catalyst, you know, for a sell-off. Who knows? Yes. Well, I mean, I really hope we'll not go into second lockdown because otherwise, not sure what log lockdowns did positively till now for the last past year. Yeah, you, so. you know, there is a lot less patience every time this happens. A lot less patience. And added to that, the fact that, you know, initially there was a target, you know, slow down the pace, blah, 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 wait for a vaccine. We got the vaccines. But I think that, you know, people, uh, I mean, you know, uh, for a good reason, have started losing their patience, like, you know, do whatever you need to do. But, you know, life has to go back to normal, right? Yeah, sooner or later. Yeah, we are, and, it looks like that we are very late now. Yeah, to be honest, sooner has already passed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, mate, thank you very much okay. for being thank here you. with us. Thank um, you for inviting me. Sir. And thank you, everybody. Uh, Steve, Israel going to lock down in one month for one month. Okay, oh, sorry to hear about that, mate. Um, okay, see you all uh, tomorrow. Thank you, Gregor. Bye bye, you. mate. Bye bye.